Facebook. It was challenging the first one. Because he wanted to be in the place of love. Somebody came up with the idea. And he was 100% accurate in his prediction. Plenium, iodine, or calcium, you don't have to know any of that stuff. All you have to be able to do is chew. Thomas, if you want to tell us, we're talking about Bimini, we're talking about Atlantis. Um, what have you found in the ancient world that, that you think applies to what's going on today? Well, first of all, we've had a tremendous amount of Earth changes prior to this entire the time we're in right now. We've actually proven that the polarity in the South Atlantic Ocean is opposite than it was, you know, 11 or 13,000 years ago. So in, we know that North Pole and South Pole is switched at one point. It does not like it does a flip the whole planet. It collapses to zero point, it, it does a switch at the core, and comes up opposite on the other side. So there isn't like a major flip that we go through. Your toilet might flush the opposite direction, but it's you know, an electromagnetic it, flip it's an electromagnetic flip. Now, there's also something that takes place in the magnetosphere, and, and the ground plane's affected. To take a long story real short, the ground plane obviously is where we're standing, and continental drift sometimes takes place. So the Mayans left us a solution for that about uh, 2,000 years ago. It was found in the 90s. Uh, the Association for Research and Enlightenment and others uh, actually were, were locating it. And there was a whole group of individuals that went out, and I was part of that project in 95 where we copied it all over the world. And what it is is it really buffers that, that switch as far as its, its catastrophic uh, built, uh, normal effect that it would have on us on the ground plane. It, it has to do with the magnetosphere and what's called independent ley line triangulation. It's more than you probably want to hear right now. We have time to tell you. But the fact is, is that the prophecies have, have all shown us that Clearly, everybody's in alignment that, that, the, that we're going to go through some type of a switch here. What we have been conditioned to do is be in fear, which is really where we don't want to be. We want to be in a whole entire different place of actually assisting. And it might not be like this catastrophic thing that a lot of people fear in their heads and go through. It could be that what many are prophesizing is a very accelerated, heightened state of consciousness very quickly. We're, the entire collective, as in everyone on the planet, shifts and goes up higher. So, and we're also written in the Akashic Records that we never have to go through this again. Since this whole earth change thing is, a, is an actual effect of a cause of us being in this discordant, you know, activity. Well, we're really in discordant feeling and thought, generating energy out into the, into the atmosphere and creating disharmony. The planet actually is like, gets to a point where it just kind of shakes us off like fleas. That never happens again, and maybe doesn't happen this time. If we can assist each other to rise in consciousness and discontinue on the inner planes, the th negative thoughts and the negative feelings that we're processing through and actually not participate with those will actually create a collective hundredth monkey effect and it will take form in everybody and everybody will start to get conscious of this and that's our whole project here with Lightspeed is gifting back the planet our natural abilities to be able to tap into this and actually identify these discordant thoughts and feelings at these levels. It's an inner mastery piece that we all have. It's just a matter of connecting it up quicker. If we can get there faster, we can discreate what we've created and therefore the effect of the cause that would normally come through as being catastrophic is transmuted and moves on. And we, uh, we can actually utilize that, that energy for something real positive which is the violet spectrum energy. I'm going to give this one to, uh, to Thomas. Okay, to Thomas. Uh, we have a, actually, just to answer your question too, I got a CD back there which is called the Violet Flame or Violet Fire God Force Meditation that we do in the workshops and whatever else. Take it, Thomas. Right, so for about the last 25 years, we've been working with frequency enhancement, actually for about the last 25,000 or even farther back than that. But nevertheless, the violet flame being the transmuting flame, actually it's the activity of uh, the law of grace. Actually, actually, in this particular frequency, we've been able to bring this in in the light spectrum. It's above the ultraviolets, and we can actually emit it now with with our technology to actually transmute the environment of a room and actually con create a controlled environment in the room. So yes, it's done. We can, we can create it. We can recreate it. And we're doing that regularly. And we're, we've got software and things coming out right now that are going to be able to actually assist people to actually tap into that. And you're absolutely correct. 
The other piece is the, the power of the spoken word and the power of the heart. And, and absolutely, in all the ancient civilizations, the teachings was the same, to take the power of the mind, bring it to the center of the heart, and speak and think from this place. This is our universal eternal peace. See, we have two laws in the universe acting, finite and infinite. Okay, we, as our personality and our ego, is in a finite reality. Finite says everything that had a beginning will have an end. Infinite says that everything that never had a beginning will never have an end. We're also infinite beings. Our right hemisphere of our brain is tapped into our infinite. The left hemisphere is tapped into finite. Finite is developed in this third dimension to actually operate and get things done in this dimension. Infinite is to pull from universal mind into our activity experience and bridge it to actually creating in this environment. We got it backwards. We've actually switched over where the ego thinks it's God, that it's actually trying to create and figure out, and the finite or the infinite piece has been blocked. And, and many of us are, are, are just walking around banging our heads against the wall because we're, we're just totally out of sync. These temples were created to create a controlled environment so a student could enter into this controlled frequency that would balance both hemispheres, opening up the doorway to the infinite and allowing the student to bridge clearly back to the finite and utilize both hemispheres of the brain to carry a message of divinity to the multitudes. That's the, so here we are. Now the temple itself is being transitioned into this temple here. This temple here is truly the, the eternal activity in the physical plane, the representation of it, and we are actually transmuting and transitioning, transfiguring that temple into a light body, where soon we will be stepping through the veil, in and out, and not be subject to the physical plane and bound to these planes. So in this case, what we do with, with our work is help the individual tap back into the infinite, get the both hemispheres lined up, bridge, and be the infinite that they are, or the d divine that they are, and the expression of that. So in, as we're speaking here, our whole process is to bring back universal love, the Christ consciousness universal on the planet, eternal. And that's what we are. We're talking about seeking understanding from Atlantis and Mu and Lemuria. We were all there. Yeah. Welcome back. You know, we don't, we don't <laughs> leave. We don't die. Death is non-existent. We're, yeah, I, I do. I actually do. So the, pardon? What's your booth number? 207. 207. Yeah, I'll pass it on because there's other people I want to share. One, one, one comment about that too. I mean, metaphysicians and people in the psychic communities or metaphysical communities for you know all this time. Come on, Joe. Come on, that's okay. You walk in front of me. Uh, you know, I've talked about the violet light and the violet fire as being a purifying, uh, being a purifying meditation. Science is now taking that to the next level. We use violet light or ultraviolet light specifically as a as an antiseptic. We use it for uh, uh, to eliminate germs. Uh, they pull your blood out of your body and run it through an ultraviolet light machine. Uh, and then put it back in your body, a la Keith Richard, although I think he's using newborn babies as a juice box as well. So, uh, uh, you know. I just want to share it. You know, because he's really messed up, man. You know, it's like, have some more ultraviolet light, baby. I just want to share one last thing. The, the most important thing we can do is summed up in one word. And that is? Service. Service, amen. Next question. Somebody down here, somebody down here. Yes, lovely lady. Thomas Morton, stand up for a second. Give me your parting shot. What do people most need to know right now? Okay, you take your consciousness, shut your eyes, and bring it right here to your heart and be in this place right here and, and express yourself from your divinity. Be the divinity that you are and do not participate with lack consciousness. Don't go along with thoughts of being lack, being less than, but it, on the opposite tip, know that you're infinite, that you're able to actually do anything. There's no limitation and you're able to do anything. Hold to that. Do not participate with doubt. Stay in the now. Stay present. Resonate the love to everybody you come into contact with, no matter what their outer appearance seems to be. Serve everyone selflessly. Don't look at anybody or judge them because of their outer condition. Look to the soul. Connect with that. Communion with that. Be in presence and be in your divinity with that. And sustain it. 
Do not move away from it. Hold it and bring it forward. And at the end of each day, ask yourself, how many people did I help today?